All right, we're still in section 4.5. This is going to be video number three. And it's gonna line up with tip number three that we're doing here in our gray box. So you notice this tip says for solving a log equation <clears throat> where I have more than one log. In this um, case, we're gonna, we've got a logarithm equals a logarithm. Um, the given equation is going to equal f of x equals g of x. This goes back to this property that we talked about in the first video. All right, so we're going to work examples number six, eight, and nine. So let's follow me down here to example six. And you'll notice what I have is a log plus a log equals a log. Okay, now what I want to do is the very first step is I want to take these two over here and I want to make it look like my tip back up in the gray box. I need a single log equals a single log. It's not just that I want it to equal my tip, um, it's that I want to use that property that we covered in the very first part of um, the first video of this section. I want it to look like a log equals a log. All right, so I need to condense. Let's We're gonna use the concepts from section 4.3 when I learned how to condense my logs in section 4.3. And so the very first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the product rule. Notice that this is a log plus a log. So my product rule says that I can condense that down to a single log of two things multiplied together. And then I'll go ahead and distribute my x. And so this will be log of 2x squared plus x is equal to the log of x plus 8. All right, now this is going back to that very first property at the top of these notes. When you have a log equals a log, and I do now, a single log equals a single log, they're the same base, then I'm allowed to write a miniature equation that says whatever I'm taking the log of on the left has to equal whatever I'm taking the log of on the right. Well, now this is just a simple quadratic equation to be solved. So I'll subtract x on both sides. And um, I'll move the 8 to the left so I can have a 0 on one side. And um, I actually didn't even have to do that because now I'm just going to move the 8 back over to the right and divide by 2. So x squared is equal to 4. Take the square root of both sides. Don't forget, when you take the square root of both sides, you have to remember a pos neg. Um, but here's the thing. I'm not going to keep both of these solutions. Remember that at the end of the last video, I talked about the domain. If you... If you don't remember what I'm talking about. If you'll go back to the big gray box, look at the, the last tip in the big gray box where it says we need to make sure that our solution um, is in the domain of my logarithm. And an, an easier way to think about that is I'm not allowed to take the log of a negative. So go back to your original equation, plug in a 2. Well, let's see, if I plug a 2 in here, that's going to be log of a positive. We're good. If I plug a 2 in here, that's the log of a positive. We're good. If I plug a 2 in here, log of a positive. No problem. Now let's go plug in our negative 2. Well, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 1. Um, that is taking the log of a negative. So I have to throw out the um, the negative 2, and I'm only allowed to keep the positive 2. So this is going to be my final solution. And this little um, blurb here just reminds us that if you go back to the parent log, the domain is 0 to infinity. For this reason, it's always necessary to check our solutions and make sure that we're only taking the log of a positive number. All right, let's go down to example number eight. Now, once again, here, I don't have um, log equals log. So once again, I need to um, condense my logs. So I'll use the product rule on the left side. And I'll go ahead and multiply those two binomials together. And I think I erased a little bit too much. There we go. 
And then I can, this is actually tip number two in the big gray box. So now I can use exponentials. I have a log equals something that's not a log. So I can use two raised to the third power is equal to my quadratic. Two cubed equals my quadratic. Let's get zero on one side. Um, this is not factorable, so I'm going to have to use the quadratic formula. We'll simplify our quadratic formula. All right, now, because we need to check our solutions, there's two issues here. First of all, I'm asked for an exact value, and the way I have my answer written at the moment, it is exact. However, I need some decimal values to be able to plug back in to my equation. So for a moment, um, this is just sort of a side note here, I'm going to get some decimal values. And I'm going to look at um, x equals 11 plus root 65 all over 4. And I'm also going to look at x equals 11 minus root 65 all over 4. So I'm going to um, plug these into my calculator and I'm going to get two different decimal values. And um, when I plug these into the original, um, 2 times 4 something, that's 8 something, minus 5. So this one's log of a positive, no problem. And here, log of 4 something minus 3. That's the log of a positive, no problem. Um, we have that this solution is a good solution. Um, when I look at the other one, the 0.7, um, the easier one to think of is 0.7 minus 3. This is going to cause me to take the log of a negative. So I need to throw out the 11 minus the square root of 65 all over 4 because it it's not a negative number, but when I plug it in, it causes me to take the log of a negative number, and I'm never allowed to take the log of a negative. So I'm only going to keep the solution then that is 11 plus the square root of 65 all over 4. All right, one more example, and that is going to be number 9. Um, and so notice that you've got um, a few different logs here. Um, but before I do anything, I uh oh, sorry about that. Sometimes it just does its own thing. Here we go. Um, the first thing I want to look at is this guy right here. It can be cleaned up. Remember, the natural log is the same thing as log base E. So this is log base E of E raised to something else. And so if you'll use your properties from um, section 4.3, the very, very, very last property in section 4.3, it's a theorem actually, um, I can clean this up before I do anything else. So this is just going to be my power left over, natural log of x. That's not magic. I just used a property. And that's the only thing I did in that line is to use that property on the first term. Well, now um, what I'm going to do is um, these two um, can be uh, considered the quotient rule. So I'll have the, a single natural log of x over x minus 4 is equal to the natural log of 5. Well, now I have log equals log. And so from the very first property in this section, when I have a log equals a log, I can set up a mini equation. Whatever I'm taking the log of on the left has to equal whatever I'm taking the log of on the right. And now I can just solve as normal. Um, notice that 5 is the same as 5 over 1. And so I can just cross multiply here. So that I'll get x is equal to 5x minus 20. Combine like terms, 4x is equal to 20, divide on both sides by 4, and you'll get an x value of 5. Before I go any further, just make sure that when I plug this in, it's causing me to take the log of a positive number. So here, this is going to be the log of 5. That one works. Here, this is the log of 5 minus 4, which is just a 1. That's positive, so that one works as well. All right, so that's the end of this video. Stay tuned for the next one.